All right, God bless each and every one of you. It's Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. It's 927, the 19th. Okay, I'm going to share with you guys. I had a couple of dreams last night. They were very intense. Um, I'm going to get right, I'll get right into them, okay? Then I'm going to read a little bit. A few things. Um, one of them, the first dream, was like seeing, uh, a guy that was tribal, from a tribal country where they have tribes, like in Africa or something, where it's divided and uh, there's different tribes. Well, this guy was there and we were looking down into another part, but he was told to go down into there to see what was going on. And he, you could see he was very nervous about it. He was taking deep breaths like he had doubts. And you could also see like ports where people were loading or unloading one of the two. Something was going on with these ports. And uh, and I think these crocodiles are going to have something to do with these ports. But anyhow, um, we took in, uh, I grabbed hold of them and I, you know, pulled them down and we went down that way. And uh, it's like we slid down into it. And when we were sitting down there and there was other people around us, um, there was this one guy, his whole socket of his arm was gone. Okay, just totally like something ripped it out of the socket. I didn't know what it was at the time, but he was definitely missing his left arm. Like it was torn out. And he looked at the other guy that was tribal that had makeup on his face. And uh, he told him, he goes, you know, you don't look like you're from around here. He goes, uh, you need to relax. And then all of a sudden I looked at him and that makeup was gone. And uh, he was trying to blend in. And uh, then all of a sudden I seen these guys like they were getting ready to unload on these boats. Uh, they each had an arm of a crocodile. But the crocodile was real flat looking like it was dead. It was like a giant too, but it was huge. The men looked pretty small, each carrying a leg and going in to the, the boat, unloading it like they were like they were unloading crocodiles, dead crocodiles. Then I seen four huge crocodiles. They were walking, their legs fully extended out. You ever seen a crocodile when it walks? It's got, you know, little short legs, but they lift their whole body up. And these things were walking right behind the dead one that they're putting on and uh then they just jumped in uh and started coming after everybody and uh i mean like to devour them <laughs> and uh the guy that i was around he took off running and running by and everybody they all scattered and uh these things didn't come near me they didn't even try to bother me and i wasn't at all even worried about them you know i mean i was like you know, these things were, they were gigantic. Okay. And then, let me see. I believe this has something to do with the judgment that's coming out. It's happening. All nations are going to be going through this. All nations. Nobody's going to be spared this. Okay. So, everybody needs to, uh, Trust in the Lord and know who's doing it. Remember, God says he's going to um, put things in their hearts and he's going to make people do these things. Or in Scripture, it says he stretched out his hands and he, you know, he puts these things in people to do what they're going to be doing. He says, I raise the wicked for the day of evil. So they're going to be doing his will. And these are going to be like godless people, you know, because, I mean... Look around, man. People love this a whole lot better than uh, they don't even like to retain the knowledge of God in their minds. I talk to people, yeah, I don't know, but I don't really like to think about it. In other words, I don't want to talk about it. You know, I'd rather sit home and watch cowboy movies or uh, anything, do anything, be occupied by the world than to retain God in my knowledge. You know, we're seeing the mighty power of God right now, and they're not even uh, turning to him right now. They're still hanging on to the ways of the world. 
okay? So I woke up from that dream and I wrote it down, okay? Then I had it, another dream about it looked like war. Like somebody was uh, threatening somebody to do something. Then all of a sudden, boom, they blew something up really big. Then I seen military troops. You know, one troop would go this way and another troop would go this way. They're like, like tons of them. They're marching through each other, like just constantly, you know, marching through each other. It's massive. It's going to be massive war. And then uh, all of a sudden, like where I was at, it just blew up. You know, it was like, it felt like, like where I was at, everything around me just went boom, blew up, and I woke up. And when I woke up, I, I was laughing because I'm going to tell you something, guys. I just go to bed at night, and these dreams, I have them. Lord's been pouring them out on me big time. I don't go to bed worrying about them. I go to bed trying to get an understanding. They're not pleasant. I don't dread them. I don't avoid them. I keep my mind always on Christ, on God, the Father. And I am aware of what he's doing to this world and why. And it's just like I said, they don't like to retain God in their knowledge. And, uh, you know, once a week on Sunday, <laughs> they don't even do it then. They get a couple of sermons going and it's more like a get together hour or something. And, uh, I don't even like to go out around here anymore, you guys. I mean, I'm done with this place. I'm really done with it. And like those crocodiles I seen, you guys, last year, the year before, I had lots of dreams with uh, crocodiles where I was in the water with them. And then all of a sudden, one of my last ones, I was like on a boat where there was crocodiles in the water, but I was like on top of it all. The boat I was on, I could drive it from a, almost an A-frame. I was on the very top or not anywhere near any of it. And I was able to look down and see everything while I was driving around. And uh, now these crocodiles that I'm seeing, I believe what it means is how intense, how it's like right on top and nobody was escaping it. Nobody. You know, they didn't come near me, but nobody was escaping this, you guys. And scripture says that. What he's bringing on people, they're not going to escape it unless they escape it through their righteousness that they attain through God and Christ. If Christ is abiding in them, you know, most of these people don't want it. They don't even, they won't see it coming. They're not going to see it coming. Anyhow, let me get to this, okay? I wanted to share that. It was very intense and they were huge. And I think the reason why the size I'm talking about, they were like giants, crocodiles, giants crocodile. I've had many dreams about giants waking up. Well, these things were giants. And uh, this army, this war, this is God bringing this about. God's doing it. He's bringing it all down. All this is coming down, man. The, the uh, things that were loading the docks like, there was four of them out there loading or unloading. I couldn't tell. I just seen them turning. You know? Whatever they were doing, I couldn't tell whether it was unloading or loading. But I can tell you this. Everything is in God's hands. It's going to turn the way he wants it to turn. And uh, when we went around warning everybody, telling everybody to be ready, get ready, and uh, repent, turn away from this world. This Satan is the prince of this world. And the love of this world, the cares of this life, things that are in it, the rudiments of the world. I've had people tell me the church going people. Oh, God gave them the knowledge to make this medicine. No. Scripture says uh, the, the ways of this world is foolishness to God. And they said, oh boy. Or like, oh no, or something like that. Like it just came to mind. The thing is, people are listening to these people in these churches. I'm going to tell you, all the years that I was out there trying to warn people, I didn't see any churches out there doing it. None. And if you did see some people out there, there was happy signs. I'll make people feel good. You know, not warning anybody, not telling anybody anything. Just trying to make them feel good. Make them feel comfortable living the way they've been living forever. You know, we're supposed to be doing this every day. Not 
not every other day, not not twice a week, as every day we should have been raising our children this way the moment they were able to learn and hear and when you read to them. You could instead of having little old baby books about little baby ducks and stuff, they should have been reading the word of God, getting them right into it. Because you know what? They would have been paying attention. They would have been listening. Scripture says that to you. All right. Now, I'm going to read a couple of different things, you guys. I'm going to go to 2 Timothy uh, 3 8. I'm going to read a little bit more, okay? <laughs> okay. I'm going to start off at 3, and I'm going to read all the way till uh, 9. This know also. That in the last days, perilous times will come. Men will be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heedy, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. This is what it says. They have a form of God, godliness, but they deny the power. It says, turn away from them. Turn away from them. The people that say, you know, they can't overcome. The word of God tells you to overcome. We're to overcome sin. God wants obedience. And we have to obey his word. And follow Christ. We have aim here to show us, you know, how to do it. Through him, then your captivity is over. But people love the darkness more. That's why you see everything the way it is here. They love it. They prefer the darkness. They, they, they got a web spun over their mind. We all did. And now we can see clearly. I don't see how it got the way it is when I read scripture. And, uh. I don't see how people are living the way they're living that claim to even be Christians. When I read scriptures, it's nowhere near these churches. They're having a flag in front of their church. We've clearly, God has clearly shown us how evil and corrupt this government is. All government. They're all corrupt. And they're perverted. Uh, and they still like them. For these are the sort. They creep into houses and they lead captive silly women, laden with sin, led away with divers' lust, ever learning but never able to come into the knowledge of truth. As James and Jamborees withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt mind, reprobate concerning the faith. They shall proceed no further. For their folly shall be made manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. This is what you see everywhere, you guys. I got to really stop and I got to pause. Excuse me. Okay. Guy said he was listening to a good preacher. And then uh, I was listening. He turned it up so I could hear it. He was talking about some guys, how that back then they used to ride camels. Around. You know, and that was their way of having transportation and stuff. And I said, he's not reading out of the word of God. I said, he's talking about people riding camels and stuff. I said, you know, and he's going, no, 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 this guy's a good preacher. He's really righteous. And I'm like, well, I listened here for about five minutes and I heard nothing about the word of God. I heard his version of things. He's not preaching the times that we're in. Talking about how they used to ride camels back then. We know that. Everybody rode either a camel or a horse. But uh, he was just, that's it. it. As soon as I told him that, I said, I don't hear him take nothing about the word of God. And he just rolled up his window and drove off. Oh, boy. Anyhow, this is the kind of insanity. This is why I'm telling you it's difficult. Anyhow, let me get back to reading this, okay? Okay, you guys. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, my manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, 
temptations, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, Icon, Luster, what persecutions I endured. But out of them all, the Lord delivered me. Yeah, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. I'm amazed. I hate that when people interrupt me like that and then I'm hearing that kind of nonsense. Then this is what I'm saying, the insanity. I can't even sit in a church without hearing, because they're not out warning nobody. They haven't. And they're telling people these that God gave them wisdom to make this stuff and, uh, and they're preaching. They're not preaching the word of God. They're preaching. They're like that guy. I was listening to his doctrine, not this doctrine. Okay. Continue thou in the things which you have learned, and have been assured of knowing, of whom thou hast learned them. From a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise unto your salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Okay. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I tried to tell him that guy's preaching his own teaching. He's not even reading anything out of the word of God. Let's do over five minutes. I heard him, his things, his saying about riding camels and stuff like that. You know, it's crazy. And in these times, I can think of other things like how corrupt and wicked our government is. How we shouldn't be taking these shots. But that guy, he took the shots. He took them. He took them probably two months ago. And yeah, you know, it's crazy, you guys. They're reprobated minds. This is happening. That's why I told you I don't even care to come down here no more. All right, let's go to uh, Daniel chapter 4. Pay particular attention to verse 3. I'll repeat it when I get to it. Daniel's chapter 4. Unreal. 27 to 37. This here is when Nebuchadnezzar, uh, he, uh, he, he praises and he exalts God in heaven. It's humbled. All right. Wherefore, O king, let thy counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness, your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. All this came upon the king, Nebuchadnezzar, at the end of twelve months. He walked into the palace in the kingdom of Babylon. Then the king spoke, and he said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of of the kingdom by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty. While the words were still on the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you and they shall drive you from men and the dwelling that be with the beast of the field. You guys, remember where I told you how uh, the uh, Social Security office here, it's called Human Services. They have that image of a human being, their face. Two times, it's changing into a bird with claws. That's what I'm reading now, okay? While the words were still in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven. O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you. 
It shall drive you from men, and the dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. To make you eat grass as the ox, and seven times pass over you, that is seven years, until thou knows that the Most High ruleth with the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomever he will. The God sits above high. Who wanted to make their throne above God? Satan. And what does men here do? Same thing. They want to exalt themselves above God. All right, here's 33. Same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, that he was driven from men, and he did eat grass as an ox, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hairs were grown like eagles' feathers, and his nails like birds' claws. Now, and at the end of the days, Nebuchadnezzar lifted up his eyes unto heaven, and his understanding returned unto him. In other words, God gives us this understanding to understand what we see now, where they can't. I was just listening to a bunch of nonsense. This guy thought it was really good preaching, you know, and I didn't. To me, it was nonsense, and this is why people don't see nothing. And he does it. And he took the shot. This is why they don't have an understanding. Of what they're doing it anymore. God took it away from them. And it says right here, his understanding returned unto him. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him, liveth forever. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. And his kingdom is from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. None could stay his hand, or say unto him, What dost thou do? At the same time, my reason returned unto me, and for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and brightness returned unto me, and my counselors and the Lord sought unto me. And I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. Listen to this, verse 37. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are true, ways are judgment, and those that walk in pride he is able to abase. You see that out? His understanding returned to him. Nobody here is going to see what's coming. They won't understand it either. That's why it says we'll see it with our eyes. Some will die too, you guys. But it also says your works will follow you. Well, the enemy says, well, you can't do works to earn your salvation. Well, we know that. We know we're saved by grace. But we were created unto doing good works for God. Now, in obedience. The people that sit there and say that, they don't want you. They want you to sit back and do nothing. Listen to dead works. Listen to dead words. That's why it says, how much more will the blood of Christ urge your conscience from dead works unto serving the living God? How much will the blood of Christ? You know, we got our eyes open for this reason to see what time it is. You the ignorance we were in. I'm saying that's what these people are doing. That's all they do. What they're going to continue doing to do. All right, let's go to First Thessalonians, uh, chapter four. Chapter four. 13 to 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, 
that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them our sleep. For the Lord himself will should descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Guys, we need to be always ready for Christ's return, right? We're that close. We are that close. You know, don't worry about the destruction that's coming upon this earth, okay? Don't worry about it. It's got to happen, and it's going to happen. That's what I was seeing all last, last night, man. It's big. I think it's right now. It's on top of us. People, I've talked to that guy so many times, even before the shot. I've been witnessing that guy for three years, and it did no good. Nothing. That's why I say people are who they are. They're going to do what they're going to do. Now, we've been born in here. When we moved here, we've been born in here. I'm going to tell you something. A lot of people, they just avoid you. They stay away from you. Some of them, they, they, they take it and they go, like, wow. You know, like they get something out of it. But it's the last time you hear from them. You know? That's the only thing that's in Scripture, what Jesus did. When he talked about destroying the temple, he's talking about his body. They thought the building. That's why they wanted to crucify him. You know? And then now, in this generation, where we have 46 chromosomes, which took 46 years to build the temple back then. But the temple is not a building, it's the body. You know, just like Jesus was talking about his body being the temple, what do you think the Antichrist is going to be in? He mimics, he tries to mimic, and he's already done it. He's, uh, he's changed laws, he's perverted things, uh, the laws are changing, the judges are corrupt, and he's running it now, man. Obama, you know, he's perverted everything you can imagine, and uh, they're all part of it, okay, let me see, uh, 13 to 18, did that was the first, second, two, all right. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that day of Christ is at hand. You guys know that. We've got our eyes open for this. Let no man deceive you by any means. That day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. You clearly see the falling away. How they reprobated minds and everything. Everybody's doing what they're doing. They're all taking their shots. They're all doing what the world is doing. Falling away, okay? And there come a falling away first, and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Which, at the moment, past laws perverted. Perversion. He's done it. Everybody clearly knows it. Nobody's ever done this before. He has. Who opposes and exalts himself <clears throat> all above all that is called God. Now, did you not see the Time magazines where they made him look like that evil statue spinning the world and everything in his hands? Had him with a, a crucifixion on it or crown of thorns on his head. They did all that with Obama. You know, it made him look like he was above God. They've done all that. Years ago, they've done that. We're further in this than everybody knows. And that temple was his body, the body that he was in, that he did all this in. Jesus was talking about his body. He glorified God in heaven. Obama is the opposite. All right, so, all right, and he opposes 
he exalted himself as, as he was God, or that is worship, so that he as God did it in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That's the body. People are looking for a building, man. They're wrong. They're wrong. That's why they're going to be late. They ain't ready. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Do you not find it a coincidence that these people are not talking about the 46 years to build that temple, the 46 chromosomes in our body? Do you not find that just a little uh, strange and that Jesus was talking about his body and not the building? And you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time, which he has been revealed. Those eyes to see. So the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now liveth will live until he be taken out of the way. And he and that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. He shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. With all power and signs and lion wonder. These Satans deceived the whole world. Who do you think that came in now? Obama. Did what he's doing after the working of Satan. Satan's already deceived everybody. He made it easy for Obama to do what he's done. With all the deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, it might be saved. This guy tried it's and talked and called him all kinds of things. We even told him what was in the shots, and he got mad and just drove off. For this cause, God will send them strong delusions that they should believe the lie. They all might be damned who believe not the truth, but they had pleasure on righteousness. We are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren of the Lord, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and the belief of truth. Whereunto where he called you by our gospel to obtaining the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast, hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which has loved us and has given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Okay, now let us go to Second Peter two thirteen. Second Peter two thirteen. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Their spots they are, blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings, while they feast with you. Yet, the guy stopped wanting me to listen to nonsense. You know, this guy's supposed to be a big, I hear that about everything down here. Everybody's a, a sharp cookie, they're big time preachers. And they don't preach out of the Word of God. They give a lot of their doctrines. They use a lot of big words that you don't understand. Then you got to go into the dictionary and break them all down. You know, I've given you guys a couple of big words, but they were in the Bible. And then I said, look them up. Look them up. But they were in the Bible. Not words that I came up with. Aren't in the Bible. All right, let's go to Colossians chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 17. <clears throat> if you then be risen with Christ, seek the things which are above, where Christ sitteth, on the right hand of God. Set your affection on the things above, 
not on the things of this earth. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ and God. Okay? That's, he didn't open your eyes, did you? Holding on to anything here. Everything here should be dead to you right now. Your affections, your love, everything should be in Christ. God, the Father in heaven. This should not be. We're here right now, but this, we're dead to this. It's over. When Christ, who is our life, he will appear. Then shall you appear with him in glory. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil, conspicuous, and covetedness, which is idolatry, for which things the sake, that sake the wrath of God, cometh on the children of disobedience. Now, sin is disobedience. In which you also walked sometime, when you lived in them. What it says in, in uh, Ephesians 2. Who has quickened you? Were dead in trespasses. Were. Now you have put off all these things anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, sink, on nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, the elect of God, holy and beloved, holes of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man has a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you, richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart, Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Okay? Thank you, guys. Eight minutes. There's just no way of doing it, you guys. It takes a little while to do this. <clears throat> okay? God bless each and every one of you. All who call on the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ, will be saved. And uh, believe that he died and raised on the third day. And you will be saved. Your sins, repent of your sins. And stop. You know, it's like it says in there, we, we do have a mediator where we can repent. But it did say, if your eye causes you to sin, it would be better to pluck it out. Okay? Than to enter into the kingdom without it than to burn in hell with it. Okay? If your arm causes you to sin, it would be better to cut it off. Enter into hell. Or enter into heaven without um, your arm than to enter into hell with both arms. In other words, you guys, we have a mediator. You don't have to pull your eye. You don't have to cut your arm off. But he wants you in obedience. And it may be tough because this is spiritual. These are the things you have to purge out of you. The sin that you let in. We all let it in at one time or another. But these things you have to get out of you. You know, it's like Take possession of your best, or they will. If you don't, they will. All right, you guys, I appreciate the help we've received with the uh, the account, getting the extra funds for the two single mothers that we know. 
and uh, one's in Paris and one's in uh, uh, oh gosh I have a hard time with this because it's in uh, uh, that's where that tall statue is uh, so they got a statue of Jesus which I don't really care for that uh, that's what they got you know, I, I don't think we should have any kind of statue. I don't think we should have the Statue of Liberty. But these are things that we're not supposed to be doing. But anyhow, they're all both fine this month. Okay, it's all taken care of. Count, anybody that puts anything in there, if we build up any money, I'll tell you when it's, it's set and it's good. We're not going to be making any um, more payments. Sending them any money until next month because we've done the quota already. But we do appreciate anybody that's helping us with it. Funds in it, so it will be available when we do send it next month. And uh, so I'm going to probably include this in all my videos while we can. I don't know how much time is left. Things look really nasty and bad. Whatever we do have, we'll send it to them as fast as we can. And when we reach a certain limit, we'll tell you. We'll let you know when we're lit. We don't need any more. No, but any help is appreciated out there, you got the time we, we see. I think we got around $900 all together. Well, now, because I've got 200 in there now. But uh, we, we had like 700 when we sent it out. And we appreciate it, all the help that we got. Okay, God bless you guys. In Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. What are those dreams I'm having? I'm seeing where it's going to be in. in the crocodiles, they were like, they were like giants, you know? And then the war, it, it's all at hand. But remember this, God's in control. I said, what? We're going to see what happens to them. It's all their understanding has been taken away from them. Now, they're listening to nonsense. They don't see what's going on. That's why they're listening to people getting shot. They're being told that God gave them knowledge for it. No. They're not reading their Bibles. Guys, stay in the Word of God. Read your read your scriptures. This is what we need to be doing day in and day out. Okay? Stay away from television. Television is bad. There's nothing good in it. Don't be caught away with your cell phones watching everything going on. You know, a little bit, okay. Keep yourself up. That's fine. But don't let it take too much of your time. You know, turn it off sometimes. Spend your time in the Word. You know, watch some Christian movies. Get some understanding. But even when you watch a Christian movie, have your Bible right there. So you can sit there and say, that's not in Scripture. That didn't happen. Because it was done in Hollywood. You know, yeah, there's going to be a lot of truth in there. But there's going to be a lot of deception. You got this one movie with Joseph. I like watching it. But the guy says, uh, Leah, uh, she's giving him Seven sons by Leah and a daughter. And actually, was a daughter. You know, but it's little things like that that they paint. We'll just believe it. Didn't know it. It's like having our understanding taken away from us. Who does it? God does it. Who's bringing this evil on the world right now? God's doing it. Satan doesn't like it. Doesn't it say in Revelation 17 17? God. Uh, puts it in their heart until they give their power to the beast. You know, Satan knows his time's up. It's up, you know, but he's going to do everything according to what God wants him to do. God bless you guys. I love you. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior.